yeah so like through this platform you can just see this is like okay this is reminding me like what I have like for resource requirements that are defined in my config and this is the monthly cost that I should expect for this app and like when you press deploy here it will then send a request through like um, uh, the Kubernetes API but it's also being set it's also being passed through like temporal because uh, you would really want like something to handle like you know there's many different things that can go wrong <laughs> uh, like if you send a request for example to AWS let's say I didn't have like um, or like AWS didn't give me enough like capacity for deploying like these T3s um, so like you know one thing that could happen would be it would just get stuck um, another thing could happen where it'd be like um, the Kubernetes API is being overloaded so like mm. you know one of the the calls gets dropped and you, you know you don't want your application to like deploy part of the application you either want like all of it or like none of it so by putting it through like temporal it, it it gives you this like built-in like way to have like retry logic around all of, all of those operations, so that way things get deployed like very reliably. For people who don't know about Temporal, can you like summarize what they do and like? A few yeah. yeah. So um, like Temporal uh, slash like Cadence. Cadence is is the original name that uh, of a, an application that Uber developed. So Uber created that to solve um, the issue of you know chaining a lot of like business flows or or like things that are a lot of uh, pieces of a distributed system um, reliably and stitching them together. So like to illustrate like why that's needed, uh, like we can kind of like walk through like what goes into, you know, getting a DoorDash order. So like one, you like open your phone and you, you know, click it through like the menus and stuff. And you're like, okay, I found a restaurant. You press like, okay, I'm going to order this. What it needs to do is like notify the restaurant, notify and find a driver. Um, that driver then needs to go to the restaurant whenever it like makes sense. Um, the driver then like gets in the car like and then gets back and then goes to find the like users like address to like drop off their stuff. The user gets the stuff uh, and then they need to like you know bill the user. They need to then you know pay the driver and you know those are a lot of different steps. And if if that whole chain of stuff just did not work just almost always, they wouldn't have a scalable business. Like if you have like millions of you know DoorDash orders and um, even like one percent of them were like you know not working and you need an engineer to figure it out they wouldn't have a business very quickly mm. so, so then yes. temporal so then temporal makes sure that it's done sort of transactionally or that there's if something fails it keeps trying until it no longer fails like what's the logic there yeah so it's kind of like allows you to build uh control loops into like systems so like um at one level like kubernetes very much is a control loop inside of its own cluster but uh, Temporal allows you to like make anything into like a system that is like control looped. So like the control loop for like this sort of platform is like, okay, I want to be able to deploy stuff, but if something doesn't work, I want it to still continue trying or like I can define like what I want the loop to then continue to do. Um, so I could like set rules where it's like, I wanted to continue trying for an hour. And if it doesn't work after an hour, then I want to notify somebody where I want to roll back all the things that I tried. So it allows you to define like, how do I want to move forward? And then like, you know, close the loop on like, okay, uh, now if I want to destroy this or clean it up or notify people. Um, so like, you know, if something gets stuck in a certain area, you can, it'll only get stuck there and it'll be, a, you can like check it out on your observability. You can be like, this isn't working. Um, it's like in process, so we don't have to like stop or like figure out where things stopped. It's already there and it's already retrying. And then you can resolve the problem there and then update mm. your like logic if you need to. Um, and control loops are very powerful because they just keep things like moving. If things are, are stopped, then usually your business is stopped, really. So uh, yeah, it's really just a control loop for distributed systems. Okay, cool. So this is what you're using to build Zeus, right? So you're building Zeus on top of Temporal. Uh, now, in the typical case, like for people who are not using Zeus, how do they f figure it out? So let's say they're committing a particular, the latest version of their code that already includes all of like the, the, the Kubernetes files. Then, then what? There's a separate service always that picks it up. Is it like a GitHub Actions or like a CACD type of thing that then makes a call to the Kubernetes API to, uh, um, to update the state? Yeah, so like a very popular way that people will deploy apps is using Helm charts. So like that is one way. And I'll show you what the Helm chart looks like for like Temporal. 
and uh, so like that's like one thing so you have a helm chart and like on the command line with your terminal you can say okay helm install this helm this helm chart but uh, the thing about like the way that helm charts are set up is that they usually look like this um, and this is uh, like very confusing <laughs> You're like mm -hmm. okay web deployment and uh, okay it's got like 3,000 conditionals um, so you're like, well, which parts of this do I need or which parts like have like hidden requirements that aren't really transparent. So yeah. like the, the first step for, you know, if you just want to deploy a temporal yourself um, through like Kubernetes is like, okay, figure out all of these conditionals that, that all map, back, they all map back down to this. Um, so then you have like hundreds like of lines, you know, I think this has close to like 500 lines that then you have to go like figure out, okay, how does this map to those conditionals? It's not mm. very readable in its current stage. Um, and like this also has like hidden kind of like dependencies. It, you know, it assumes that you've already got the infrastructure to run this. It doesn't tell you what you need, like very explicitly. You kind of have to figure it out. Um, mm. And then in the case of like many different like apps nowadays, that they're not just like a single like standalone app. A lot of apps have like dependencies on needing like a database or like, you know, a different like technology. Um, to use the uh, to use like temporals like Helm chart, you would like either want like you know a data store of like MySQL, Postgres, or Cassandra, um, and then you would you know use something like Elasticsearch for like their observability, and then they have these other two things set up. So that would assume that you already got like you know that figured out, um, and then you would then go to like your cluster and like the command line, and then run something like this, and then you would just hope that it installs. <laughs> yeah, but can you? Maybe we need to take like one step back and just kind of like, can you paint the picture of the kind of workflow that might fail? So, because what I have in mind is, let's imagine we already have like a Kubernetes cluster running, right? And we have a bunch of different yeah. services. We have, but really the only change that now I need to introduce is, let's say, to increase the memory that I allot to one of my stateful set services or something, right? Like to one of my stateful set pods. So then. I go, you know, I, I, I do that change locally in my IDE. Then I commit it to GitHub. What would be the transaction that could possibly fail that would necessitate, like, this sort of conditional logic? Yeah, so, like, if you wanted to, let's say you've already got this Helm chart deployed. Um, assuming that the, the Helm chart already had, like, a value for, like, setting a resource. So let me try to see if there's one in here. Um, okay, so like, let's let's say like the heap size or whatever mm, or something yeah. you changed here. I'm trying to find something you know that looks like this. Okay, here they actually have resources here. Um, so like, let's say you're like, okay, we need more memory for application. Instead of this, we're gonna add you know one gigabyte. If you then uh, like changed it here and committed it or whatever, and then re reinstalled it, it would then like you know apply those changes to your like existing um, deployed um, cluster. And mm -hmm. let's say one of the things that could happen would be uh, like an uns it's not schedulable, which means like you wanted one gigabyte, but we don't have any capacity on any machines to make that work. So then it mm. will just be stuck. It'll just say, well, we can't schedule. Um, and then you would have to figure that out, um, usually from like your observability or like you would, you know, watch it from like the install and you would see that it's not working. 